probably be and probably is certainly beyond the margin of victory in this race. Because if it's only three scanners working for two hours, right, that's 18,000 ballots that went through. People putting in ballots from suitcases they pulled out from under so the table. So we're now at 11.09. When they said they were closed. There were, in addition to the four workers that you see there, there were two other people who were bringing ballots in and out. Uh, the, the gentleman in red that you saw, and then a second person, I can't tell if it's a male or female based on their uh, hair being pulled back in their mask, but in any event, that's six total people. That are all going to jail. And so if we were to sit here for the next treason. two hours, what we would see is that this operation just goes on and on and on. They're scanning until about 12.55 in the morning. So we kept the, the uh, video running. And, you know, we can show you the people who gave us the affidavits reappearing at that time, just as they said, around 1 a.m. to find out, are they in fact counting after they told us they would stop working or not? Um, and we will fast forward to that. But have you all seen as much as you'd like to see of what's happening here? I think I, so. I think you basically get the idea. Unless any member wants to see more. Or you have any questions? No. no, let's go ahead. Okay. The suitcases have been put away. Okay, so it's updated to 1250. You can see these people are still there up in the upper right hand corner. Basically, they've wrapped up. This is the end of their operation. They've now completed about two hours of unsupervised tabulation of ballots. So now you're going to watch them leave. And let's fast forward to, um, let's go to 1.30. I think it was between 1.30 and 1.45 is when our two witnesses come back. They had to fight through security to get in there, but they did. And they say in their affidavits that two different people affirm for them that people have been counting from, you know, 10.30 when they cleared out until about approximately five minutes before they arrived. And they have the names of those people who told them that. Okay, now we're looking at, what is that, 1.42 in the morning. Is there a way to fast forward a bit or make it go a little faster? So they've now returned to State Farm Arena, having heard from the press that they had continued counting because they wanted to see for themselves that that was really happening, uh, which was a complete contradiction to what they had been told by at least one person from uh, Fulton County, who's an employee and spokesperson, and also the lady in the blonde braids we spoke about earlier. Um, and so they see for themselves. And from this, we get the affidavit. I don't know the name of the lady in the blonde braids, um, they simply gave a description to us, and you can, you can make out clearly who she is based on the people in the, in the film. Um, lady in the blonde braids, halfway down her back is the person who yelled out, everyone leave and stop counting. Um, I believe Ms. Waller is the uh, spokesperson for Fulton County Elections who, was, who remained behind the other two people they don't have names for. They just said they were older women, and one of them had the name Ruby across their, her shirt somewhere. And that's as much as they know about who those people were. Um, but so our guys go in, they look around, they ask a few questions, and they leave. It is from their affidavits that we even knew to ask. What happens is everyone clears out, including the Republican observers and the press, but four people stay behind and continue counting and tabulating 